A white police officer stops a black woman, but his life changes the moment. She lowers her window. It was a typical afternoon in Phoenix, Arizona. Officer Jack Parker, a seasoned police officer, was patrolling the busy streets when he noticed a black car speeding down the road. The car was swerving between lanes, its tires screeching as it passed other vehicles. Officer Parker immediately flicked on his siren and pulled the car over, expecting it to be a routine traffic stop. As he approached the vehicle, he saw a young black woman behind the wheel. Her name was Tasha Williams. She seemed calm, but there was an air of defiance about her, as if she already knew the game he was about to play. Officer Parker had pulled over dozens of people in his career, but something about this moment felt different. Tasha wasn't like the other drivers he'd stopped before. She wasn't afraid. She wasn't even nervous. Good afternoon, ma'am, Officer Parker said, his voice cold but professional. I clocked you speeding. Can I see your license and registration? Tasha didn't respond immediately. Instead, she looked straight ahead, her eyes locked on the rearview mirror, seemingly lost in thought. Officer Parker noticed her hesitation, and a small spark of frustration began to rise in him. He repeated his question, this time with a bit more authority in his voice. Tasha finally turned her head and gave him a faint smile, one that hinted at something deeper, something more powerful. And then, she did something that would forever change both of their lives. She slowly rolled down her window. Officer Parker had seen it all before. The nervous drivers, the desperate attempts to talk their way out of a ticket, and the occasional defiant one. But Tasha Williams was different. There was no panic in her eyes, no stammer in her voice. She didn't act like someone who feared the law. Instead, she stood her ground with quiet composure, the faintest hint of a smirk playing on her lips. The officer had no reason to think anything was amiss, but something about the situation rubbed him the wrong way. Was she just another person trying to talk their way out of a ticket? Or was there something else going on here? His thoughts raced as he glanced at the registration in his hand. No record of any prior offenses. No flags in her history. You're not in any kind of trouble, ma'am, Officer Parker said as he studied her information once again. I just need to make sure everything checks out. Tasha didn't say anything. Instead, she glanced out the window, her gaze shifting toward the busy street ahead and then back to him. There was something in her eyes, a glint of quiet confidence that made him uneasy. She was making him feel small in a way that he couldn't quite place. As he waited for her to provide her details, Officer Parker noticed the expensive watch on her wrist, the luxury car she was driving, and the steady calm that emanated from her. It didn't take long before he realized this wasn't just any driver. Something about this woman seemed out of place in a routine traffic stop, and that feeling only grew stronger when she reached for the glove compartment. Officer Parker's heart was pounding now. He had always believed that power and influence were things that only came with years of experience, wealth, or status. But in that moment, standing before him was a woman who embodied all of that in ways he could never have anticipated. She wasn't just a law-abiding citizen. She was someone who could reshape everything he thought he knew about the world. The officer glanced at the card again and then, for the first time since the interaction had begun, he took a step back, the weight of the situation sinking in. His thoughts were racing. Tasha Williams, the CEO of a multi-million dollar tech empire, was someone he'd read about in the papers seen in business magazines, and heard about from colleagues. She was known not only for her business acumen, but for her stance on social issues, her leadership in a predominantly male industry, and her advocacy for marginalized groups. But standing in front of him now was a woman who didn't demand respect through grand gestures. She didn't need to. She commanded it through quiet, unshakable confidence 
And as she waited for his response, Parker felt the full gravity of his mistake. Ma'am, I didn't know, he muttered, fumbling for the right words. I'm really sorry for the inconvenience. It wasn't my intention to... Save your apology, Tasha interrupted, her voice calm but firm. I'm not here for your apologies. I'm here because this moment, this stop, could have gone very differently. Parker swallowed hard, the weight of her words hanging in the air. He could feel his career, his reputation, teetering on the edge of a knife. He had thought this was just another routine traffic stop, a simple ticket. But this encounter was something far greater, an awakening to the privileges he had never before questioned. He had seen the power of people like her on television, but now he was directly in her path, and there was no turning back. Tasha had a different perspective on life, one shaped by her struggles and determination. She wasn't just going to let her encounter with Officer Parker be a passing moment. Instead, she seized it as a reminder of the biases that still linger in society, especially within institutions of authority. The officer had tried to assert his power with an air of superiority, but she wasn't intimidated. Her calm composure in that critical moment, despite the adrenaline and rising tension, wasn't just a personal victory, it was a statement. She had grown up in a world where such encounters were not unusual. The emotional weight of being marginalized and dismissed by the very systems meant to protect her had fueled her sense of justice and compassion. Her experiences gave her the strength to stay composed, to rise above, and most importantly, to recognize when an opportunity for change had presented itself. Back at the police station, Officer Parker was seething. His pride had been wounded, his assumptions shattered. He had pulled over what he thought was just another routine traffic stop, but instead, he found himself face to face with someone who defied all his preconceived notions. It was a bitter pill to swallow for someone who had been used to exercising power without question. However, instead of confronting his biases, he went into damage control mode, trying to rationalize his actions. But the seed of doubt had been planted. Deep down, he knew something wasn't right, but his pride couldn't let him fully acknowledge it. Tasha, on the other hand, was unwavering. She had no intention of letting this incident slide. She knew that real change didn't come from silence. She had a voice, and she was going to use it. The next day, she found herself meeting with the police department's internal affairs. It was a necessary step but Tasha had no intention of backing down. What she was doing was bigger than just this incident. It was about pushing for accountability, standing up for what was right, and making sure this wasn't just another story that was forgotten. As the days passed, Mark's interactions with Cheeky began to weigh heavily on him. He realized that his actions had been wrong and that what he'd once considered a harmless display of power had actually been a deep-seated prejudice. Mark's pride had blinded him to the humanity in others, and now he could no longer ignore the truth that stared him in the face. What Cheek had done wasn't just about standing up for himself. It was about standing up for the dignity of others, for the very values that Mark had long ignored in his pursuit of success. It wasn't just a slap in the face to Mark's ego. It was a mirror reflecting all of his own insecurities and flaws. He had never questioned the system he was part of, had never once considered how his position in life had been shaped by others' suffering. But now, as he stood at the crossroads, he was forced to confront his own biases head-on. The shift in Mark's mindset wasn't immediate. It took time for the truth to settle in, to change the way he viewed the world. He began to see the complexities of the situation, how power dynamics were often invisible yet pervasive. But more than that, he started to see people, real people, with dreams, struggles, and stories of their own, just like him. By the time Mark reached out to Cheek to apologize, he understood that true change came from within. 
It wasn't enough to just say the words. He had to embody the humility and respect he had long denied others. It wasn't easy, but it was necessary. And with that, the first step toward healing, both for Mark and for Cheek, had been taken. The next few weeks were a time of reflection and growth for both Mark and Chaik. Mark's apology wasn't the end, but the beginning of a long process of unlearning and rebuilding. He knew that he could never fully undo the harm he had caused, but he could do better moving forward. Starting with how he treated others, how he viewed people of different backgrounds, and how he used his privilege. Cheek, for his part, accepted Mark's apology, though he made it clear that action spoke louder than words. He was cautious but hopeful, understanding that true change required effort and commitment, not just gestures. It wasn't easy for Mark to break free from his past, but little by little, he began to prove that his remorse was genuine. He listened more, spoke less, and took the time to understand the struggles of those who weren't given the same opportunities he had. In the end, it was karma, what Chiki had always believed in, that guided the course of their journey. Mark's willingness to acknowledge his mistakes and work to become a better person didn't just change his own life. It changed the lives of those around him. He became more compassionate, more empathetic, and ultimately, a better version of himself. The lesson was clear. True change doesn't come from power, money, or status. It comes from humility, self-awareness, and the courage to right the wrongs we've done. Cheek's encounter with Mark had indeed changed everything. Not just for Mark, but for the world they both shared.